right. That's right. And now people are in a financial crunch and they're going crazy because you told them that the blessing was coming and it never came instead of letting them know to learn how to enjoy what you got. Judgment will first start in the house of God. I told you I'm not going to stop you. Because this, these are the things that we need to know. These are the things that we need to hear. The body of Christ has got to become aware that there is a balance in God. Yeah, man. And that God has requirements of us. Yes. That we cannot continue the act. We cannot continue the no. Academy Award no, acting. No, no, no. And act like we're okay when we're not. Because these are times where people go crazy. Mm -hmm. Yes. These are times where people lose their mind. Yeah. And we need to let them know truth. Because one thing about God's word, man, when you, when you put it out there, it's, it's going to fall where it's supposed to fall. And, and, and it's going to do what it's supposed to do. I don't have to pretty up God's word. If God speaks about a particular sin or a particular issue in my life, God is going to let me know because, because he said in Hebrews that he disciplines those he loves. So if ain't nobody ever challenging our lifestyles, they ain't really loving us. Yeah, yeah. God's people, God's people. I'm not talking about sinners. I'm talking about us. God's people, we have got to find our way back to the simplicity of the gospel. The simplicity Listen, of the gospel. There ain't no prophetic word I got. I ain't got no deep thing about, you know, you're going to open up the mail and then it's going to be a check to fix all your problems. Because guess what? If your problem is greed, that check ain't going to do nothing but, but prolong the sickness. If the problem is pride, then you getting a bigger job ain't going to deal with your problem. God is not as concerned about making you happy as he's concerned about making you his. You hear that? And he says that every branch that bears fruit, he prunes. He prunes. Could it be that we're in a season right now that he's pruning so that we can bear more fruit? And I just want to just encourage the people of God to say yes to whatever it is that he's allowing. Just say yes. Just say, not my will, but thy will. Because some stuff that he's getting rid of, some of the stuff needs to be getting rid of. Because some stuff has become a God. Some stuff has become your Linus blanket. And God is a jealous God. And he'll have no other God but him. And he'll get rid of whatever he needs to get rid of until he can get you to himself. And if you try to hurry up and get yourself out, you're just going to prolong the process. And it has to do with something that's not very popular in today's theology or today's preaching in the church. And that's about suffering, man. It's about suffering and, and patience. Suffering and patience is something that we're not talking a lot about because everybody is tired and frustrated and ready to move to their season and ready to move to this thing. But I want to tell you one important thing about seasons. There are four of them. There are four of them. And so there's never a time for a child of God when he's not in his season. There's never a time. If it's winter, if it's storming, if it's raining, that's part of the seasons. That you can't expect for everything that comes from God to be wonderful and joyous and, and big and prosperous. That he wants you to prosper as your soul prospers. And one of the greatest ways that your soul prospers is through pain. Through storms and through tragedy. You also make a lot of mistakes. You know, you, you make a lot of mistakes because you're trying to be in but not of. Right. And it's very hard to be in and, and not of. It's, it's, a, it's almost like walking into a room of cigarette smokers and trying to leave out without smelling like smoke. Right. You know, 
And then you find out later that the experts say the secondhand smoke is even more dangerous. Right. So sometimes you don't have to go to the clubs and you don't have to go to the after parties and you don't even have to do what, what the world is doing. But you can be in it so long that sometimes you sometimes develop their swagger. Right. And you forget that you're only there to represent him. But then sometimes you think that you got to represent yourself. And you don't even realize it sometimes. You don't, you don't always realize that you've gone over there and you want to make it home. Right. And so many times you say that you know, you're crossing over to take the crossover, but a lot of times you're trying to cross over to take Kirk over. You know, and, and, and uh, you know, there have been a lot of times that I've been guilty of that, you know, and I'm still striving to learn how to be in but not of right. and it's a very painful process but because i don't want to keep letting the lord down and keep forgetting that it's all about him and so but that's what that's the thing that we need because yeah. you can like kirk was saying you can start to feel and believe the hype you can believe the hype people tell you how great you are until you start singing the same song how yes, great right. i am yeah. how great i am <laughs> and, and, and it takes brothers and sisters to come and say hey what i'm seeing is not god yeah i see a whole lot of you but i don't see god That's good. Alors, c'est une chose de parler de décadence euh, la odysséenne lorsque l'on se trouve à l'extérieur, mais lorsque des euh, acteurs actifs de la odyssée prennent le micro pour eux-mêmes dénoncer les abus et les dérives de ce système, je pense que c'est deux fois plus frappant. Parce que ce qui est sûr, c'est qu'il y a de ci, de là, beaucoup de voix qui s'élèvent pour dire qu'il faut revenir à la simplicité de l'évangile et qui sont décriés. Mais là, c'est un témoignage qui vient de l'intérieur et qui doit donc davantage nous interpeller. Et donc, ce que ces deux pasteurs disent, hein, parce qu'il s'agit de deux pasteurs qui, en même temps, sont des méga-stars de la chanson, ce qu'ils disent, c'est que il est pratiquement impossible de se retrouver à l'avant, comme ça, sans prendre la gloire pour soi, sans finalement se dire que nous sommes nous-mêmes applaudis. Et évidemment qu'on a de la compassion pour eux, et il faut en rien leur jeter la première pierre, il faut plutôt prier pour ces gens, mais leur témoignage est extrêmement important, il nous prouve que dans la Odyssée, et que donc, donc dans ce système de mise en avant de l'homme au travers du showbiz et des stars, il n'est pas possible de rester attaché à l'humilité et aux différents fruits de l'esprit. Parce que, imaginez-vous, faire un bain de foule avec, et j'y avais assisté d'ailleurs à un des concerts de Kirk Franklin, il avait toute la foule qui essayait de le toucher, qui criait son nom, qui essayait d'arracher ses vêtements, vous imaginez quand vous rentrez chez vous, difficile de se dire que vous n'êtes pas supérieur aux autres donc ce système n'est pas compatible avec, euh, avec l'évangile déjà parce que la seule star, si on doit parler ainsi, c'est Jésus, et également parce que celui qui mérite la gloire, l'honneur et l'adoration, ce n'est que Jésus, aucun homme n'est le subsidiaire, aucun homme ne, ne doit partager sa gloire, lorsqu'on partage sa gloire, on se retrouve dans un déséquilibre dans un dysfonctionnement dont ils sont en train de témoigner sous nos yeux. Le problème, c'est qu'on ne peut pas dénoncer un système et rester à l'intérieur. Ça veut dire que notre témoignage n'est pas crédible. Donc, nous, vraiment, je vous invite à prier. Je prie également que Kirk Franklin et les autres soient éclairés de telle sorte à sortir totalement de la Odyssée. On ne peut pas négocier, on ne peut pas essayer de garder quelque chose. Il faut totalement abandonner ce système. Il est corrompu, il glorifie l'homme et il éloigne de la simplicité de l'Évangile et euh, des exigences du Seigneur. Je vais reprendre ce que Kirk disait, il disait qu'il est difficile pour lui de se souvenir qu'il est là pour représenter le Seigneur et non lui-même. Euh, il y a eu un, un scandale récemment aux états unis lorsque, invité à une émission de télévision, il s'est prosterné devant la journaliste et a ensuite monté sur ses genoux. Donc cette indécence a choqué beaucoup de chrétiens et à juste titre, mais cela pour euh, nous rappeler finalement qu'il y a une incompétence compatibilité de base entre la lumière et les ténèbres. Soit vous y allez pour briller, soit vous y allez et vous vous faites happer par les ténèbres qui euh, vous environnent. Pour qu'un chrétien garde sa saveur, il faut d'abord, dans son cas à lui, sortir du système pour ne pas en dépendre, pour ne pas devoir évoluer dans ses rouages. Donc il faut sortir du système, sortez du milieu d'elle, mon peuple. Je vous invite à cliquer sur la quatrième partie, le manque de zèle pour la vérité dans la Odyssée.